tomorrow will come. So many times we get up, we open the gifts. Sometimes we're happy with them. Sometimes we're not. But you know, we ought to be thrilled if we get anything. <laughs> but I've seen the times where people are, are so unhappy because they didn't get what they wanted. But there's one gift. The gift that God gave on that first Christmas morning. It was a gift that not everybody wanted. In fact, still today, not everybody wants God's gift. But everybody needs God's gift. So he gave the gift that we all need. And the gift that God gave, again, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's the one that God gave, that son of his. A little babe born in the manger that night in Bethlehem. A babe born like all others, except without the aid of a human father. Born of a virgin, Isaiah 7 tells us that he would be. The New Testament, Luke and Matthew tell us that he was, and John says that the Word became flesh. That little babe was both man and God. That little babe, as the song says, did Mary really realize that that one who she just gave birth to was not only her son, but was her maker. Do we realize that today? All that Jesus is. Tonight, think with me. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all need that gift. We all need to be saved. And God so loved you. He so loved each of us tonight that he gave his son. I don't know if you've ever stopped and thought, that's not an easy thing to do. How many of you would give your children for the worst criminal in this world? It'd be hard for me. I think it'd be hard for you. And it was hard for God, but God so loved. And so therefore, he gave his son. The son that God gave was the gift that we all need. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9, it says that that one, that one that would be born there, he is called wonderful. It says he is called our counselor. He's called the mighty God. He's called the everlasting Father. He's called the Prince of Peace. That babe that was born was God's unspeakable gift. He is the greatest gift ever given. You can buy a, a gift. You can spend many, many, many thousands of dollars for gifts, and, but yet you can never purchase a gift like that gift of God. God's unspeakable gift. The Bible said there in 
as they have formed to us. A child is born, a son is given. For Mary, it was a son born. For God, it was a son given. That babe, that gift of God's, we find that God gave a supernatural son. Jesus was supernaturally conceived. He was born of the Virgin Mary. Isaiah 7, 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. That babe had to fulfill that prophecy, or he was no different than any other baby ever born. But thank God he was born to the virgin. <laughs> he was, my friend. He was. And thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. God's supernatural gift, supernatural son, if you will. And that son he gave was a sinless son. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 4 that in all points he was tempted like as we are. <coughs> Yet without sin, he was a sinless son. If Jesus Christ had any sin, he was no different than you and I. And therefore, he could not pay for our sins. But thank God, he was without sin. He was the perfect one. And God gave his son to be our substitute, to suffer, to pay for our sins. You see, the wages of sin is death. And we're all under that condemnation. Therefore, we cannot help ourselves. We cannot pay our own sin debt. But Jesus, the Bible says, but he was wounded in the book of Isaiah. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. <coughs> and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. Jesus Christ lovingly, loving you and I, <coughs> he took on him our sin. And he paid for my sin, and he paid for your sin, for yours and mine. The Bible tells us that she shall bring forth a son, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You see, the reason Jesus came was that you might be saved, that I might be saved, that I might have a home in heaven. And thank God that babe was the all-sufficient Savior. You see, Jesus, when we put our trust in him, realizing that Calvary, he died for my sin. While he was on the cross, <coughs> you and I was on his mind. 
<laughs> he literally died for you and I. He takes, <laughs> excuse me, he takes care of, of our past, our past sins and all, by forgiveness of every sin and <laughs> transgression. We find that he takes care of us in the present by being with us. I'm glad that Jesus was in Bethlehem, but I'm glad Jesus is here with us tonight. And he'll take care of us in the future by providing a home for us in heaven at the end of our earthly journey. My friend, I ask you tonight, have you accepted God's gift? Have you received God's gift? Think about it. Tomorrow morning, Lord willing, you'll receive, will receive the gifts of your loved ones. And whether it's an orange or an orange Cadillac, it's not in the price. It's not in the value that we know of today. But my friend, it's in the gift, the worth of it. And God's gift is worth more than anything else. You see, in that gift is salvation. Salvation. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? The scripture says in Acts 16. The next verse says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. In that gift, there's salvation. There's forgiveness. There's peace. Romans 5, 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. There's peace with him. A peace that passeth all understanding. In that gift of Jesus, the greatest of all friends, the songwriter wrote, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. All in that babe, thank God he was more than a babe. He was the Savior. My friend, he's the one that paid your sin debt. And you must receive him. You must receive that gift of God. For the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And if you receive him, if you accept him, if you're saved, or if you will get saved tonight, my friend, then you will have a mansion in heaven. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old and someday yonder we will never more wonder but walk the streets that are pure as gold jesus said i in the way the truth and the life and no man cometh unto the father but by me
It's Christmas Eve. Much celebrating going on in many ways. But if you don't have Jesus, you have no reason to celebrate. But if you have Jesus, you have everything. You have a home in heaven. My friend, there's no way anybody's going to get out of this world alive. And that's your living when Jesus comes. And then you shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Have you received God's gift? If not, why don't you? It was the night before Jesus came and all through the house, not a creature was praying, not one in the house. Their Bibles were laying on the shelf without care in hopes that Jesus would not come there. The children were dressing to crawl into bed, not once ever kneeling or bowing ahead. And mom, in her rocker with baby on her lap, was watching the late show while I took a nap. When out of the east, there arose such a clatter. I sprang to my feet to see what was the matter. Away to the window, I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. When what to my wondering eyes should appear, but angels proclaiming that Jesus was here with a light like the sun sending forth a bright ray i knew in a moment this must be the day the light of his face made me cover my head it was jesus returning just like he said and though i processed worldly wisdom and wealth. I cried when I saw him in spite of myself. In the book of life which he held in his hand was written the name of every saved man. He spoke not a word as he surged through the book for my name and when he said it's not here my head hung in shame the people whose name had been written in love he gathered to take to his father above but those who are ready, he rose out with a sound. And while all the rest were left standing around, I fell to my knees, but it was too late. I had waited too long, and that sealed my fate. I stood and I cried. As they rose out of sight, oh, if I had only been ready tonight. And the words of the meaning is clear. The coming of Jesus is drawing near. There's only one life. And when comes the last call, we'll find that the Bible was true after all. Jesus said, I will save you if you will trust me. But if you will not accept me, your name will not be written 
in the Lamb's Book of Life. And for you, it will be too late. You know, Jesus is going to come in a split second. It could be before morning. This could be the day. I ask you, are you ready? Are you ready? If Jesus should come tonight and you stand before him, Could he find your name in the Lamb's Book of Life? Will you trust him? Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. The pianist is coming. Listen, if Jesus should come tonight, or if you should die tonight, where will you spend eternity? The choice is yours. There's heaven and there's hell. Jesus died that no one would have to go to hell. He paid the great price price of our sin. God accepted the price that Jesus paid. And God brought his son up out of the grave. And the Bible says, if thou shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you haven't, why not tonight? If not, and you die without him, he comes back and you haven't received him. There's no hope, my friend. Won't you please trust in Jesus tonight as we stand. The pianist is playing. If you're not saved, why don't you come get saved? You're here tonight and you're saved, but there's something in your life that needs to be taken care of. Would you come? Whatever the need might be, would you come? My friend, don't go away without Jesus. Don't go away without Jesus. It's what Christmas is. Emmanuel, God with us, that we might be with him eternally in heaven. Will you come, my friend? You say, preach, I, I don't know how. You step out and come. Someone will take a Bible and show you again. Whatever that need is, will you come? <laughs> <laughs> say, preacher, I'll get saved Sunday when I know the devil's telling you that. If you're not saved and you know it, then get saved now. Will you come? sing silent night at this time.
All right. We'll just do the first and last verse of Silent Night. It's page 431 if you need it. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child. so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. On the last, silent night, holy night. Wondrous star, lend thy light with the angels. Let us sing. Alleluia to our King. Christ the Savior is born, Christ the Savior is born, amen. Amen. Thank you much for being here tonight. I pray that you each one have a good evening, have a good Christmas, and be back Sunday morning. 10 o'clock. If there is anyone here tonight that does not have anybody to be with this evening, you're welcome to go to our house with us tonight. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Brother Ed, dismiss us if you will.